Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Hope you had a nice uh, long weekend here, uh, a nice Easter weekend. It was really a beautiful weekend here. We were like in the uh, lower 70s. I thought we're back into this. I keep saying we're back into the summertime, uh, but we are in the lower 70s here. Looks like 69 today and beautiful out. Man, this is the coolest weather we've had this late uh, in the last few years that I can remember. I'm not sure about the rest of you local folks. Uh, so let's go into uh, last week's video. I was wrong, and I am sorry. Uh, and I really was wrong. I made I made a mistake on uh, uh, on something here on one of the, uh, on the show here, and uh, some comments that I made. And uh, again, I want to apologize. I'll do that in the comment section in a little while, and that's actually where I need to do the apology in the comment section. Uh, so I'll do that shortly here. Meanwhile, not a lot to talk about in markets this morning. A little bit quiet here. Uh, I'm kind of going through the news here, and again, I'm looking at ZH. I like ZH because of all the different uh, viewpoints and opinions and uh, narratives that uh, I can get there, and I can choose my own rather than the single narrative that I get from corporate media. Uh, not too much, as I said, uh, other than the typical news out there. Um, survey retail investor shows a blind lead the blind. Uh, I think that's just in general. I think that right now uh, we live in such a topsy-turvy world that uh, uh, that the blind is leading the blind. And if you expect the media or the government to to be leading you anywhere, you are following the wrong you're following the wrong blind man. So uh, that's my opinion. Uh, you know, there's an old saying. I remember my father saying it, but uh, he said, "In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king." So uh, uh, you got to find the one-eyed uh, uh, man here, guys, uh, because that's who's king right now. Uh, if you can find someone with both eyes open. Open, great. Uh, but meanwhile, I wouldn't listen to uh, media nor government uh, on any of these situations, especially uh, big corporate media. Man, they suck. Uh, so let me move along to a couple things here. U.S. airports, busiest in more than one year on Good Friday. Well, as I said in the, the show last week, we have to be real careful, folks. This is going to be painted as a a full recovery. Uh, you know, we went from, you know, from 100 miles an hour to zero uh, uh, miles per hour uh, in the economy uh, because of uh, uh, 2020 and the uh, uh, the bad cold of 2020 and you know why I call it a bad cold just to avoid the uh, <laughs> the algos or the uh, AI that they have here uh, but the bad cold of 2020 really uh, took our uh, speed from 100 miles per hour in the economy down to zero basically and uh, uh, now we're starting to see the, the, the car or the automobile or whatever, our speed is starting to pick up a little bit. Uh, but are we going to go back to 100? No. Uh, here's what's going to happen more than likely. We're lucky if we get up to 50 miles per hour again uh, anytime soon. And I'm kind of saying it's going to be a lot less than that. We're going to be lucky if we get up to uh, uh, 30 or 40, 50 miles per hour or something like that in my opinion. However, even getting up to 20 miles per hour will be painted as a recovery by the blind people. When I say the blind people, I mean government and corporate media. They will, well, actually they're not blind. They know exactly what they're doing. It's, it's spinning a narrative, uh, spinning propaganda. And what they're going to do, they're going to try their hardest. And you really can't blame them. What else are they supposed to do? They're going to rah-rah the economy right now. They're going to rah-rah uh, uh, the numbers that are going to be coming out. And the numbers are going to look really good here coming up here shortly. Uh, first quarter numbers, second quarter numbers are probably going to look good. Because again, our economy went from 100 100 miles per hour to zero for almost a year straight. Uh, we've had, and, and, and I don't think they're talking about the real problem here is the uh, sustained damage caused by these lockdowns and these close downs uh, and the uh, sustained damage to the economy uh, that, that, and the jobs that will never come back and the people that will never get jobs again. Uh, there's a huge amount of that out there. Uh, but again, what we're going to see is we're going to see governments and media paint this as a great recovery. And again, our car, if we're lucky, we're up to 20 miles per hour in what they're going to paint as a great recovery. But of course it's going to look good because again, when you when you went from 100 miles to zero for a year, you forgot what 100 miles per hour looks like. All of a sudden, 20 miles per hour from zero looks fantastic. So that's exactly what we're going to see in the next year. More than likely is uh, uh, they're going to call it a economic recovery and really all it is is just an economic bounce. Uh, and I could go on forever. You know my opinion. If you watch my shows, you know who I blame for all of this. And uh, it's pretty obvious because I just mentioned them. Uh, 
Let me move along to a article here. Oh, hold on. I didn't look at all the ZH articles. Not much. I, I know a lot of you folks now, uh, if you haven't before you started watching my show, a lot of you folks are ZH readers now. Uh, again, ZH is free, uh, but you have to, it, unless you pay a dollar a day, you can't get it like I'm looking at it here. Uh, you get that annoying six million ads, but still for free. What do you want? Uh, uh, so you can read all these articles for free. I, admit, I, I advise that you put this particular site on your bookmark bar. I say that all the time. Well, let's take a look at some other things here. Uh, cars are 2021's toilet paper. U.S. automakers report blowout first quarter. What did I just say? We went from zero, from 100 miles per hour to zero. So, of course, they're going to say that uh, blowout first quarter because compared to what we had, uh, a zombie economy, uh, everything is going to look good. Uh, hedge fund horror, hedge funds feeling a pain. Um, boy, they haven't felt the pain yet, I'm sure. Uh, we're so stupid following our politicians. Great interview or great uh, uh, comments by uh, Charles Barkley. Uh, nothing to do with gold and silver, but if you get a chance, make sure you uh, uh, look at this video. We're so stupid following our politicians by Charles Barkley. The man nailed it. Uh, you know, if you're going to have uh, uh, celebrities become uh, 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 politicians, boy, this is one guy I'd probably vote for. Uh, Take a look at some other things. Not too much down here. Uh, censorship, uh, blind people uh, with backpacks. Uh, that's kind of cool technology. Uh, again, not too much in precious metals. Uh, here, this might relate to gold and silver people. I know I always talk about storage, storing your gold and silver and precious metals uh, and where to put it. I don't recommend having third parties hold it ever, ever, ever. People ask me all the time, Brian, should I, should I put my uh, precious metals, uh, gold and silver, in a safe deposit box? Well, I don't like that because if the bank goes on a holiday, or if the bank closes or there's some issue with the bank, you have no access to your metal whatsoever. If there's an economic collapse and the bank closes, you have no access to your metal whatsoever. What good is it to you at that point? Now you're suffering third-party risk. And we've done many shows about what third-party risk can look like. It doesn't necessarily mean that uh, uh, someone's storing your gold for it. it. It can mean where you stored your gold. If you stored your gold at a friend's house and your friend's not reliable anymore, that's third-party risk. If you store your money at a safe deposit box, uh, that's third-party risk. And here's another example of uh, what you wouldn't have thought, but uh, FBI raids businesses renting anonymous safe deposit boxes. Now, I have had a small amount of customers ask me what I think about uh, small safe deposit boxes. And again, um, I can't uh, say that they're crooked or bad or anything like that. I mean, I have had experience with one bad one in Fort Lauderdale that was breaking into people's boxes, but that's probably far from the norm, and that was a weird example. Uh, but no less private boxes, no way. It's third-party risk, in my opinion. Uh, you know, if that company, here's a perfect example. They may have been the best company in the world, uh, but the FBI raids business renting anonymous boxes. Now, all of a sudden, it's nothing to do with the company or you. Now the FBI has control of your boxes, what they did here, and these anonymous boxes. So if you had an anonymous box with this company out in California, uh, and uh, the FBI just took all your shit. They, they just took it all. And, and they want you to come and claim it and tell you what they had. So, you know, there goes the, you know, your anonymous gold. Now the FBI has it. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, the whole idea behind own, owning gold and silver is not have somebody hold it for you, no matter how trustworthy they were. You know, I've been involved with third-party risk with a company that was fantastic. They got taken down by someone else, which took me down, almost took me down. I got my money back, but I'll tell that story another day. But no, no less third-party risk, no matter how trustworthy you think the person is. If you're handing them your money or your gold, you have third-party risk. Uh, and again, FBI, perfect example. FBI raided a uh, legit company and stole everybody's stuff until they come back and claim it. Um, and that's more or less. Uh, it's just outrageous. The government has such low regard for the Fourth Amendment. Uh, the truth is, folks, the government and the media has no regard for the Fourth Amendment. They haven't had uh, a regard for Fourth Amendment in decades. Decades. This is not a recent uh, 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 thing. Uh, they haven't had any respect for the Fourth Amendment for decades. It's just recently, and the same thing with the First Amendment, and, or the Second Amendment in my opinion, but it's just recently in the last decade or so that they've had less uh, uh, respect for uh, uh, free speech. Uh, and hence the censorship you're seeing on a lot of large media platforms. Uh, let me move along here, but again, great example of something we've talked about many times, third-party risk, and why it's important to hold your gold yourself. I don't care if you bury it in your yard. I don't care if you bury it out in the woods as long as you know where it's at. I don't care if you bury it in your house, in your walls, a great safe. Keep it somewhere where no one else except maybe one other person that you trust knows of it, and uh, uh, keep it someplace where you can access it. Um, let's move along here to a couple other things. So much 
news out there is just like not not really good. Um, in my neighborhood, the largest mess seizure in Miami history uh, brings cartel arrest out of Mexico. I didn't know Florida was a uh, uh, a landing spot for uh, meth, but I guess I do now. Uh, let's take a look here. Meet the Michigan Telecom who led a second life as, okay, nothing really exciting. Oh, they do have cool articles that you're not going to read anywhere else. I recommend that, again, this is on your bookmark bar heads, uh, 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 zero hedge. I did find one article here, uh, Time to Bury the Gold Bug Macro. <clears throat> um, talks about charts and stuff like that. And uh, uh, it's kind of interesting. The charts look uh, promising from what I could read on the article. I did a quick thing. But one of the things they brought up here was uh, uh, Joe Weisenthal, co host of Odd Lots Podcast and What Do You Miss on Bloomberg TV, had some sobering comments this morning on gold and Bloomberg's. Well, I don't even know why they would mention this guy because really Joe Weisenthal, you know, he may be an expert in something, but he doesn't know shit from Shinola when it comes to gold or silver. And that's what we typically get in corporate media. There are so many uh, uh, self-proclaimed experts in gold, silver, and platinum out there. None of them have ever worked a day in their life in that market. Uh, and again, I'm not bragging. Again, I'm not an expert. Don't get me wrong, but I have worked in this industry for 40 years full time, uh, pretty much. I, you know, the physical retail sale aspect of it. I know my products. Uh, I, I, I kind of see trends. I've seen, you know, I, I got experience in this. And and I listen to some of these people like Joe Weisenthal, uh, co-host of Odd Lots and What You Miss on Bloomberg TV. And it's no different than the the experts, so-called experts on uh, CNBC, the so-called experts in Wall Street Journal uh, publications, the so-called experts on uh, uh, Fox Business News. Trust me, people, if you want to buy gold, silver, and precious metals, don't listen to these people. They don't know shit from Shinola. Uh, all you'll do is you'll go broke. I mean, as far as gold, silver, and platinum go, uh, precious metals, you'll go broke listening to these people. Uh, or you won't make any money or have any opportunity in metals if you listen to people like Joe Weisenthal from Bloomberg TV. Um, they may have their expertise. They may. I don't know. I, you know, I'm not an expert in the equities and bonds and that that end of the market. Maybe they are, and I think that's what they really are experts in. I guess. Um, again, I wouldn't know that because I don't watch any of these guys. I'm not in that field, and uh, I'm not in that market too much. Uh, so I don't watch those guys. So you'd have to tell me whether they're actually uh, good in that area. But as far as precious metals go, uh, guys like Joe Weisenthal, in my opinion, uh, the host of these programs, Bloomberg, and, and guys on CNBC and guys that you see, uh, they're, they're morons when it comes to, again, I'm sorry to say that, but uh, they're clueless when it comes to precious metals. Maybe not morons, but they're clueless. Um, and let's take a look at something clueless statement here uh, made by Joe Weisenthal from Bloomberg TV. Uh, it's officially time to bury the gold bug macro. You know, the school of thought that always warning about dollar debasement inflation as money printing. Well, here you go. Right off the bat, you know, the school of thought that's warning about dollar debasement. His first uh, basically uh, comment here is saying that that there is no dollar debasement or debasement is nothing to worry about. Uh, so this is the first idiocy of this guy's statement. And again, he's talking about gold and silver, and I'm talking about gold and silver. I don't know if he knows much about equities, but you know this statement right off the bat tells me that he probably doesn't even know what he's talking about in equities. But I won't go there. He may he may be an expert there. Uh, here's a chart of gold over the last ten years. It's up about ten percent. Uh, again, another great move. I love how guys just pick time frames for charts. Well, uh, let me pick some uh, charts of your favorite investments, Mr. Weisenthal. Uh, let's see what you liked or you've been pushing here. And let me pick my, let me cherry pick some charts uh, from that. Again, I love people that cherry pick charts, you know, from time frames. Well, from this time to this time, it did terrible. Uh, but they, they, they don't point out that from this time to this time, other time, it did fantastic. Uh, so people that cherry pick time frames on charts, they just suck. Uh, again, uh, they're trying to make a point. That's it. When you see people, uh, uh, pick uh, again time frames, specific time frames, to, and that's their sole point, and they ignore all other time frames. They're tr just trying to make a point. Uh, and again, the, the simple use of the word gold bug, I should even mention this whenever you hear anyone say the word gold bug or silver bug, right off the bat, you know that they hate precious metals. Y you pretty much know it, unless it's uh, you know somebody that uh, is just bringing up the word gold bug like I did. Uh, but as soon as you hear someone make that description, gold bug or silver bug, 
Uh, right off the bat, you know that they, they hate metals, and they're going to do whatever they can to down talk it. Uh, again, why? Because they probably have no real knowledge of precious metals whatsoever, and they look at it as competitive, competing against their particular market or expertise, uh, kind of like the uh, crypto people do. Uh, sorry about that. Or some of the gold people do to crypto. Um, no less, I don't want to digress. Uh, during this period, we run large deficits the entire time, and in fact, over the last year, some of the biggest financial stimulus of all time. Well, you know, Joe, do, do you understand how these markets work? Do you think that the markets are going to instantly fly up uh, because of uh, all the stimulus they've added here? No, it takes time to cycle through the markets. And the other thing, Joe, is, you know, with stock market flying so high, and a vast majority of people listen to, to people like you, corporate media, so-called experts, um, uh, th that is the reason that equity markets are doing so well when they actually there's no good fundamentals for equities right now. Why is real estate prices so high? Well, the reason these prices are so high, Joe, is because of debasement. And, and your comments right there, right off the bat, your first few comments just prove you have no clue what you're talking about as far as gold, silver, and platinum markets go. Uh, and I got to wonder if you know what you're talking about as far as debasement going, as far as inflation goes. Uh, let's, let's, look, let's look at some more of your comments. Uh, during this time, the size of the Fed's balance sheet rose to nearly $8 trillion from under $3 trillion. Of course, all right, that's right. Not only has gold performed poorly, the, the dollar is still dominant. How is gold performed poorly, sir? Unless you want to go ahead and cherry pick, pick, a, time, pick a time frame. Uh, Joe's probably saying it's performed poorly since last October. And absolutely it has. These things cycle. Uh, these markets cycle, and, and uh, there is a lot of monkey hammering and a lot of uh, uh, manipulation that goes in, in in gold and silver markets. That eventually is going to end. Uh, the physical markets, as I've been talking about for quite some time, is the uh, dog, and the uh, paper markets are the uh, tail. And the tail has been wagging the dog for quite a few decades now. But that is going to change up with gold and silver and platinum, and we know why. Again, I'll digress if I go into that. So let's look out what else he says here. Not only that, inflation has been mild. Well, obviously, Joe, Bloomberg's been paying you very well because you have no freaking clue about uh, inflation has been mild. Uh, obviously, your wife does all the grocery shopping and, and you don't pay the bills at home because you don't know <laughs> mild. Give me a break. Uh, contrary to what... The, all the gold bug, again, gold bug, that little uh, uh, slight, that's, uh, again, people that hate gold and silver, that's their, like, little slight. That's their derogatory comment, gold bug. So as soon as you see gold bug, in, in again, in any articles or you're, you're listening to a mainstream media or something and you hear the word gold bug, right off the bat, know that this person knows nothing about precious metals and they don't like it. Uh, of course, they would probably come back and say that inflation is actually being mismeasured and is way higher only if you look at it the right way. Well, come on, Joe. Are you, are you, you're a rah-rah for the government. I mean, you think they always tell the truth, Joe? Really? Uh, they never lie? Really? They never give bad information? Really, Joe? Come on, give me a break. We know that inflation is being mismeasured. It's been talked about by people way smarter than both you and I. Give me a freaking break, Joe. Uh, or that it's even showing up in asset values or something like that. You know what? I can't even read any more of this. Uh, Joe Weisenthal is on Twitter. Uh, if you're a Twitter person, go there and tell Joe what you think. Be really polite, please, though. Um, you know, give Joe your, your mind because a lot of people listen. There's a a lot of people that listen to this corporate mainstream bullshit, folks, uh, you know, whether it's Bloomberg's or whether it's uh, Wall Street Journal, again, CNBC, Fox Business News, all, a lot of people listen to guys like this. Uh, not you or I, we're smarter than that, but uh, a lot of people do. Uh, no less, I'm going to move along from there because I could make an entire show about the media and how ridiculous they are and how a lot of these people have no clue what they're talking about. Uh, make sure you look at your, uh, over the weekend, again, I hope you've been reading your GATA.org. No new articles since last weekend, but if you're new to the show, you know that one of my requirements for you listening to the show is that you put GATA.org on your bookmarks bar. <laughs> so, all right, I can't make you do it, but I really highly request that you do. Uh, GATA.org. Um, nothing new here since last week, uh, but again, uh, this is, has to be on your bookmark bars, folk. Uh, and, I, and I'm not saying ZH has to be, too, but if you want an alternative source to corporate media, put ZH on your bar as well. And again, make your own decisions on which articles and which stories and which things that you believe are true. Use your educated opinion. Don't be lazy and let someone else make decisions for you. Uh, again, the whole point of my gold and silver shows here, uh, and platinum, I don't talk about much about 
about platinum, but my whole point of these shows is to teach you to fish, not give you a fish. You're much more powerful when you know how to fish yourself. And if all of us know how to fish, uh, it makes the market more powerful overall, and we teach other. So we'll, the other thing I do request if you watch my shows is that you pass this information along to someone else, whether you give them the link to my videos or and or if you just uh, simply tell them yourself. I'd rather have you tell them yourself, uh, quite frankly, because when you start teaching other people, it helps you learn better. Uh, that's my opinion again. Uh, nothing really too much on GATA.org. Kind of quiet this weekend, uh, so we'll skip along to uh, gold and silver ratio. Uh, boy, I remember this little uh, section here when it was up to 120 to 1 at one point, uh, gold and silver ratio. It was pretty crazy. That was last year. Uh, and we're back down to about 69 to 1, uh, as you see right here, 68 to 1. And I'm going to draw a line to that 68 to 1. It's kind of like an average. So it seems that if we go back for uh, quite some time, man, uh, 20 years or more, whoa, wow, 20, 40 years ago, uh, the average is about since 40, since the 1980s. Um, uh, when we had our biggest bull market ever in precious metals, even bigger than the last one, even though prices haven't hit, in 1980 dollars, the 1980 market was huge. And since 1980, the gold and silver uh, uh, average has been in that kind of like 60 to 1, 65 to 1, and we're at 69 to 1 right now. Uh, I suspect that we're going to see uh, uh, higher metal prices coming up here very soon. Uh, the, the, again, the ratios are kind of getting closer together. But the problem with gold, silver, platinum, or trying to be a guru in any of these markets is when you start picking specific time frames or specific times. Uh, once you start doing that, uh, you go from hero to zero if it doesn't happen. So I'm very, very leery about picking specific time frames, especially on the short term. I'll take some wild guesses, and you've heard me spin the coin, you know, the coin you're hearing right there. Um, uh, you know, heads or tails, you know, bull market or bear market. And I do make my guesses, but... Uh, the one thing that I don't have to make a guess on is that overall, medium to long term, you will do very well buying gold and silver and platinum based on the economy, based on the topsy-turvy clown world we live in. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind. So I, I am pretty certain just by saying medium to long term that I am a hero in this era, in this, and I won't, I'm not a zero, that uh, I definitely got this right for sure. Although, as I've said, you're going to see some uh, uh, big dips here, especially if the whole market collapses. This whole uh, uh, world economy collapses, you will see the prices, the paper price of silver, gold, and platinum collapse. Uh, not of uh, physical, because you won't be able to buy physical at the collapse prices. Trust me on that. If you think it's hard to buy it now, wait till you see gold and silver. Wait till you see the whole market collapse and prices and uh, paper prices and metals collapse. You won't be able to touch it at those levels. In fact, uh, there will be a rush to buy it. Well, let's move along here to uh, spot prices down a little bit from Friday, but not much. You know, it's it's holding above that 1700 but I'm still a little leery that we're going to still see some more manipulative uh, knockdowns, some more monkey hammering coming up. Who knows if it's going to happen on a Friday or Monday. But I can tell you it'll probably happen uh, when everyone's sleeping, uh, or it'll happen on a, during a holiday or pre-holiday or when the markets are really quiet, because that's always when they hammer gold and silver and precious metal market, uh, when, when on holidays, early in the morning, or when markets are just quiet in general. And actually, it seems like markets are quiet right now. Everyone's unwinding from a holiday weekend. I'm really surprised they didn't bang it last week, but they're probably out of ammo last week. So what are we looking at right now? Um, a range of 1722, 1730. It was 1729 this morning when I looked. I'm going to do a quick refresh here, just take a look. Uh, this is a static page, and I like to use this so it's not bumping around all over the place. Uh, it's done by CCE, the great company. Uh, they've been around for 50 years now or something like that. I remember using my first CCE machine, certified coin exchange machine. Uh, it's a subscription service, dealer service only. Uh, however, we used to have like a ticker tape you had to feed in the machine to use this. Now it's all, again, everything's online. Um, a range 1722-1730 on gold, silver 2465 to 25, uh, and platinum 1193 to 1220. Platinum's holding on above that 1200 mark, which is nice. All three metals are super cheap. Uh, if you're asking whether buy, sell, or hold, of course, I'm going to take the sell word completely out. You shouldn't be selling unless you have to have money right now uh, or you plan on uh, not being here soon, uh, you know, dying or being ill, or uh, and or... Uh, uh, you have a much better investment you can make more money on. That's the only reason you should sell your precious metals. Right now, you should either be holding or buying. That's my opinion. I'm not an advisor, economic advisor. And again, I'm not, you know, that's not my field. I'm just giving you my opinion. I'm trying to teach you what I know and, and how I view things uh, so you can uh, 
uh, learn how to fish. Again, I'm trying to teach you how to fish. I'm not trying to be uh, the guy that feeds you. Uh, let's take a look at uh, silver again. Um, still hanging on to the mid 20s ranges. I'm fine with this. I'm fine with these drops of 24, even 23. It's you know it's it's looking good. Uh, and again, will we see more drops? Absolutely. But buy the freaking dips if you can, and if you can even find the damn product at a reasonable level, buy the dips. Uh, platinum above 1200. Same thing. Well, not too much to talk about here. What's my opinion is I just don't know. I, I tossed a coin when I started the show. This coin said bull market tomorrow. Um, you know, let me take a think here. Yeah, I'm going to take a shot. Uh, uh, again, just it's just a guess, folks, that the markets will be up tomorrow. Uh, but when it comes to medium and long term, I'm not guessing. I'm pretty certain about this. Um, I'm 99.9% .9 sure. Again, my opinion. Take it for what it is. Well, uh, let's take a look at where I said I was wrong, and I'm sorry, folks, and I was absolutely wrong on something this week, and uh, I want to get to, I did a little video that says, uh, uh, no, things are not okay, and uh, uh, let me get to that video so I can show you the comments, and where was I wrong here, and, uh, uh, and I really feel bad about this, I do kind of feel bad, and I want to get to that comment down, I always answer comments on these shows, or at least a few of them, I seem to be getting a lot more comments, so it's getting harder for me to, to, to acknowledge every one of them, but uh, let me uh, uh, take a look here, uh, here it is, Jim C, two days ago, again, Friday's video, uh, I like your show, but you're wrong to call all service jobs as shit jobs, do you have people working for you? If they take care of your customer, are these service jobs? So the people that work for you have shit jobs. You say we need small, medium business, which I agree with. These are service jobs. Well, Jim C., I, I, you're absolutely correct. Uh, my terminology was, it was uh, I didn't mean to, to, to call it shit jobs or, or to uh, derogatory. I didn't have a derogatory feeling. And I, I really, truly felt bad about this. I really looked at it because my first job was working at a sub shop in Boca Raton called Lou's Subs and Soups. I was like 14 years old. He made me the manager at the time, but really he made me the manager. I was the only one working there, so just to make me feel good, but it was my first job. It was a service job. I was making subs, working in front of a greasy grill, making uh, sausage sandwiches and steak sandwiches, but I loved it. It was uh, taught me responsibility when I was a kid, uh, but you're right. I did. I did call it shit jobs, and I really, really apologize. Um, they're not shit jobs, and uh, uh, I mean, hold on. Well, no, I'm going to put my foot in my mouth, though. I'm not careful. Um, it's shit pay, kind of, and it's what I what I was trying to infer is that it's entry level jobs, and uh, they're not shit jobs. Somebody, people have to start somewhere as far as economic, you know, as far as climbing their way up the economic ladder. Some people will never get beyond these uh, entry level service style jobs. Uh, however, I'm not about that. You know, whether it's my nephews, whether it's uh, family, friends, uh, I will always encourage people to get beyond entry-level jobs. You know, uh, try to improve your lot in life because you're the only one that can do it. You know, people can show you how to fish, but you're the only one that can fish for yourself and create a living for yourself. And uh, Jim, you were right. I do apologize to, for calling those shit uh, service jobs. Um, what I, what I really meant to say is that that. Uh, uh, the pay is really lower scale, and it's extremely hard. And I know it's hard to. to I've been there. Uh, I know it's hard to uh, live on, uh, on on entry level job money. It's a very difficult situation to get ahead. And perhaps that what I really meant to say is the, the situation is shit, not the job. The situation. If you're an adult and you're trying to, you know, uh, uh, do something. Uh, pay bills. Uh, uh, God forbid you have kids and you're trying to support kids on that kind of uh, entry-level jobs. It's tough. Um, but again, uh, not all these jobs are entry-level pay. Some of these service jobs, some service jobs pay very well. There's service jobs that pay 50 bucks an hour. There's service jobs that pay, you know, again, my comment was meant more toward this uh, uh, $15, $10 an hour or less uh, uh, kind of pay. It's very difficult to live off. And those are entry-level jobs. Those are the jobs when I was a kid, as someone had mentioned here, uh, a couple people had mentioned that uh, um, uh, those, these service jobs were filled with young entering the job market for the first time. And, and uh, wait a minute, doggy, it hit that, it hit that perfectly. Uh, and that's kind of what I was inferring to. 
Uh, four years of college resulting in a Starbucks job is not a fantastic economy, but at least millions will be forgiven in student debt eventually. Can it, uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that, Sensei, but I don't think student debt should be forgiven. Uh, again, I'm, that's completely digressing from this conversation. Uh, but my conversation is a big, what I'm talking about here is a big apology, Jim C. And to all those people that thought that I thought that was uh, uh, shit jobs and I, and I was uh, making derogatory comments towards them. I was not. I was just making derogatory comment towards that it's that people are expected to live like that, which is nearly impossible in my opinion. Um, so anyways, I was wrong and I do apologize uh, for anybody that uh, took offense to that. And you know what? If, you ha if you're working at a uh, service job, you should have taken offense to that. And, uh, and again, I do apologize to you. Uh, let me move on to Guntucky just because I like that name. I don't even know what he said. It's fun to sit back and watch Yellen try to be a magician. Absolutely. Hey, watch me pull a tree out of my butthole. <laughs> it's all a sham. And Bitcoin shows that people are losing faith in fiat currency. That's true, sir. And we are, know that what happens after there is a big red sign flashing people that this will not and well again uh, I, I agree with you there sadly I'd like to see this country end well before my death I'm getting up there in age I'm not that old but uh, you know I'm getting towards the uh, second half of my life here uh, and uh, I don't want to see it end that way but you know you have to prepare and be prepared for those type of things and that's why we buy gold silver and platinum uh, hopefully you don't have every bit of your money in it uh, I would not recommend that even as a gold and silver platinum dealer uh, Florida man says he bought plenty of Legos <laughs> not quite sure the reference to that please uh, let me know mr. Florida man I love the name Florida man too <laughs> it's great I don't know it's a good thing or a bad thing but pretty cool uh, Paul Wilson says mostly government jobs I would agree there is a lot of government jobs governments hiring um, my concern is that the largest employer out there is going to be government one day whether it's us whether it's welfare checks whether it's Social Security checks or whether it's just working for the government they're going to be the largest employee out there if they're not already that's not a good thing either folks uh, because production producing goods and services producing goods especially uh, is very important to the economy so if you have an entire economy not producing anything you are going to see major 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 inflation and uh, I think we're gonna see that anyways uh, it's Ray says Georgia Godstones are being fulfilled by Luciferian bastardos what is that <laughs> hey come on give me a clue what that is uh, Democratalese Matters. Got some cool names out there. I didn't even realize there's so many cool names in uh, uh, YouTube. Uh, U.S. government is falling apart. That's why I'm passing all this BS. Economy is going to crash hard. Uh, yes, yes, but it's all about timing. When is it going to crash? That's, a, that's the thing. I expected the crash years ago, and I'm glad I never publicly said that because, again, the problem you get here is when you name specific times, you look like a real zero. Uh, but the fact is, if you know it's going to happen, you know, uh, you're not a zero. Uh, Stack Boy, watch the shadow government uh, uh, government thing. I'm going to try to speed through these uh, real quick, folks. So if I missed your comment, I do apologize. Uh, as long as idiots, yep, yep, agree with that. I've seen an article that Dems are talking about sending out another stimulus check. Uh, probably. Um, oh, here, someone was asking me about the bad cold again. I make reference to the bad cold uh, as reference to, uh, uh, you know, what happened in 2020, only because um, I may be completely wrong on this, but what I don't want is I don't want my videos stuffed down where nobody can watch them because I made mention on taboo subjects, you know. Uh, so I'm going to kind of like hide the uh, words from the taboo subjects. And maybe that doesn't do it. Maybe it makes it worse. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, give me your opinion on that. Um, they didn't close down Lowe's or Home Depot either, absolutely. I made a comment out there about how the government closed down medium and small businesses. Why do they close down medium and small businesses? Because medium and small businesses probably don't have the money to fight back. Uh, but big businesses did, and had they closed down all the big businesses, I think the big businesses would have actually sued them in courts and won. Uh, that's my opinion. Again, we'll see. You know, uh, And again, why would you give preferential treatment to big business uh, unless they were in your pocket? That's my opinion again. Uh, Wima Lamin says, I live in Belgium. This is cool. Uh, listen to this one. I live in Belgium, and thanks for watching, Wim. I, I didn't know I had other people watching. Uh, where restaurants and pubs are closed for, for five months already, and now they have closed small shops for non-essential things, and people have to make an appointment or national airports. Wow, I really feel for you, uh, 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 Wim. I really do. That's just an awful situation to be in. Uh, at some point, you know, I think United States... Uh, we've been a lot more fortunate because of uh, uh, the last administration was, uh, I think, a little more sane as far as uh, its reactions to this uh, uh, 
the bad cold we had last year and uh, how they did it. Our governor in Florida has been fantastic. He opened up the state of Florida months and months and months ago. Uh, for what it's worth, folks, I never closed. Even though I was mandated to close, I stayed open the whole time. Nobody messed with me, though. Uh, but uh, uh, the governor of the state of Florida actually opened up state months and months ago. Our beaches are completely packed here. Uh, restaurants are packed. Uh, I'd say about 20% of the people are wearing masks in and about, but who cares? That's their right to do it. If they want to wear a mask for the next 100 years, I'm cool with that. Just don't try to force me to do it. Uh, oh, there we go. My, my video probably just got stuffed down. I'm sorry. Uh, but no less, uh, I feel for you in, in Belgium. Uh, we're very fortunate here in Florida that we're opened up. And uh, uh, wow, thanks for watching, Lemons. Uh, let me go along here. JD uh, asked me, Brian, any recommendations what portion of gold and silver someone should hold? Would you say 50 50 dollar wise? That's a good question. Also, thanks for letting us know what we should not. Uh, here. Thanks for letting us know that we should not pay more than $5 over spot right now for silver and not more than $100 over for gold. Super helpful to know. That is, if I just did a video and saying, hey, don't pay more than this, don't pay for more than that, that's my expertise, man. This is where I really shine because I am a retail, uh, and I do wholesale too, but I'm a retail, uh, mostly a retail gold and silver physical buy seller. You know, So we buy and sell from the public and the general public, gold and silver, coins, bars, and that kind of stuff. So this I really know uh, well. And I can tell you for sure, if you're paying more than $5 an ounce for silver products, and I'll get into that in a moment after I talk about comments here, and 100 you're paying too much. Uh, as far as how much to hold, 50 50 dollar wise, you know, uh, I, I couldn't even begin to answer that. Again, I'm not an economic, I'm not, I'm not a financial advisor. And uh, uh, for me, uh, personally, my, in my opinion, I like silver more because, again, silver's hit $50 an ounce twice already in history. In 1980, 1980 dollars, so it would be equivalent to like $500 silver now. And again, in, uh, what was it, 2012, silver hit 50. Uh, gold's hit uh, highs three times in history, 1980, 2012, and again, I think in 2020, uh, I believe, gold hit a uh, all-time high. But silver never hit its all-time high again in 19, uh, uh, you know, in 2020. In fact, it, it it stayed down quite a bit. Uh, it's not until recently it's moved up. So I still think silver has a lot of potential upside. However, you have to have a strong stomach to own silver because the, the swings are, are pretty crazy as well. Uh, so I don't know what to tell you. I wouldn't advise either way. Just go with your gut. I only reason I like silver because I think the potential upside is better um, and I can own more of it. Maybe it just makes me feel like Scrooge McDuck being able to dive into my pile of silver. Uh, whereas my pile of gold is probably a little bit smaller. Uh, Stephen Wells says, buying at uh, local coin stores, I get better deals. I keep my money local as well. You are my hero, Stephen. Let's take a, hey, hang on a second. Thanks, Stephen. I appreciate that. Keep the money local, folks. I think you should do that even if you're buying uh, tires, if you're buying jewelry. Stop buying on Amazon if you can. Stop buying uh, uh, from online resellers. Buy local. Buy local. I mean, the online guys may be great, but keep that money in your state if you can. Even if you have to drive an hour, uh, at the very least, keep it in your state. Um, John. Hey, John. What's up? Um, Undisturbed Kingdom. I like the intro. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Uh, Undisturbed Kingdom King. Uh, Kevin, uh, I'm sorry, Kevin Kilgore. It's a shame that many people know that a good job is 30 years now, a medical, dental, and cola. Well, kind of what I was pointing, the entry-level jobs, service jobs are just that. They're entry-level jobs. And your goal in an entry-level job, my goal when I was a kid and a lot of goals of people is, is while I had that entry-level job, I didn't stop looking for a job. I when you ha There's a saying that says, when you have a good job, that's the best time to look for another better job. Not when, you know what I mean, you're not in a desperate situation. So I was always kind of looking to improve my lot in life, and I think uh, most adults are. Uh, so most adults don't plan on staying in uh, service jobs for a very long time. But don't forget, there are some service jobs that pay very well, so that's a misnomer in a way. Um, so boy, Truffle says the moment you start talking about NFTs, I instantly reach for some silver to fondle. Oh, I'm glad it's just the silver you were fondling there, Savoy Truffle. But uh, yeah, I get what you're saying. Hey, hey, thanks for watching too. Uh, Larry Tennant says, Mama told me there'd be days like this, but years. Yeah, Larry, uh, you know, we're living in topsy-turvy world. Uh, so, you know, get used to it, I guess. I'm trying to. Uh, wait a minute, dog. He says, my favorite line in What About Bob is when Bill Murray, God, Bill Murray's a great actor. I feel good. I feel great. I feel wonderful. Uh, <laughs> Keep your, and, and that's kind of like true is it's it's like a lot of us are walk, looking around and it seems like things are falling apart on us but you have to repeat that mantra I feel good I feel great I feel wonderful uh, uh, so maybe Bill Murray wasn't too far off there uh, there was a comment down here that I was going to ignore but I, I said you know um, keep it real says to me 
so are you going to close your business? I guess it's because of my comment, you know, about uh, on my video here that says, uh, uh, where is it? Uh, no, things are not okay. Um, well, the, the, am I going to sell my business because things are not okay? No, actually, uh, keep it real. This is the best time for my business right now. I can provide the most service to people out there by trading their uh, fiat dollars and their fiat cryptos and their fiat uh, uh, paper uh, instruments for uh, real physical metal. You know, gold and silver. You know, gold, the thing that's been around for 5,000 years, uh, has a 5,000-year track record and uh, is used by uh, money by central banks, the people that actually create fake money. Uh, so they think it's real, obviously. They just don't tell us that. Uh, so, uh, no, I think it's a great time for us, sir. Um, or ma'am, I'm sorry. I don't mean to, uh, uh, under, you know, I'm not sure what you are. But I think it's a great uh, a great time for uh, my business. So why would I close? It's a great opportunity for other people as well. And, and probably for you as well, keep it real. But I'm not sure what you do. Um, I appreciate the criticism, too, about uh, the videos. I'm trying to... Uh, you, this is new for me. I'm not a video. I'm a rare coin and a precious metal dealer. This is what I do for a living. I'm not a uh, uh, an online personality. I'm not a uh, uh, you know a media personality of any sort. You know the purpose of these videos was strictly for me to try to garner some local business. You know I don't do all I do is uh, brick and mortar local business. So I don't do online business. So there's really no benefit for me to have customers outside my area listening. But you know what? The, I I did realize after some point that there is a benefit. It's called education educating people and uh, helping them learn what I learn and again teaching them to fish instead of giving them a fish so if some guy in Washington state who's never gonna spend a dime with me is listening to me and he learns something and he becomes a better buyer and he spends his money local I am really cool with that even if I didn't make a dime off it so there you go as far as the pencil sharpening noise I'm not quite sure what you're talking about uh, was it this noise hang on a second where did my uh, coin go was it this that's not a pencil sharpener, sir. When's the last time, ma'am, sir, ma'am, I'm sorry. That's not a pencil sharpener, uh, undefined person. <laughs> uh, that's a coin rolling around. When's the last time you heard a pencil sharpener? I remember a pencil sharpener, unless I missed the pencil sharpener. And uh, bouncing around in the video, yeah, I'm a bit spastic at times, but I'm not an expert at this. So please forgive me. I make mistakes, and I'm not perfect at this. I'm trying my hardest. Um, but... <clears throat> I will listen to constructive criticism. So if I'm bouncing around, I'm not sure if you meant my cursor's bouncing or I'm bouncing around subject to subject, but, you know, I listen. I listen. I think uh, criticism is very good, constructive criticism. I don't like nasty criticism. Uh, and uh, if it's distracting, I do apologize, uh, uh, sir, ma'am, or uh, undefined character. <laughs> so uh, calm down. Uh, God, it's hard to calm down doing a half-hour show because there's so much to say. The first thing, the hardest thing about doing these things is... Uh, uh, that uh, I have to, I don't script these. I just get up and uh, in the morning I look at markets, I read some news, and then I just kind of wing it from there. Um, I don't uh, specifically, uh, and again, you can tell from the show that I'm winging it. <laughs> you can tell I'm not a professional because I'm winging it, but I just kind of wing it and I talk about whatever comes in my mind. Sometimes it's a little tough, my mind's a little foggy some days. Uh, and then some days I just kind of bounce around a little too fast. Uh, and for that, I do apologize. But again, I'm not here to be a professional. Uh, entertainer or anything like that. Uh, I'm not here to, uh, uh, well, I'm here to uh, educate and also gain local business. Uh, and that's the truth. Uh, but thanks for watching too, Keep It Real. I really appreciate it and I do appreciate the constructive criticism. Well, let me move on to what I said I was going to do is talk about the best deals out there. Best deals out there right now is still 90% U.S. silver coin. Uh, uh, the worst deals out there right now are U.S. Gold Eagles and Silver Eagles. Most beautiful product. I, you know, and I keep saying buy local, buy local, buy American. But in this case, American is is almost more than double uh, premium of, than what uh, the generic stuff is. So I couldn't, with good conscience, tell you to buy Silver Gold Eagles at a hundred and sixty to two hundred dollars over the price of gold, or Silver Eagles anywhere from eight dollars to twelve dollars over the price of silver per unit. I couldn't in good conscience tell you to do that, even though I'd rather have you buy local. Uh, why? Because you can buy as far as, instead of paying you know 8 to $12 for a Silver Eagle, you can buy 90% uh, U.S. silver coin for less than $5 per ounce over the price of silver. And I've got it for sale for spot plus four. Um, so why would you pay spot plus 8 to 12 for American Silver Eagle? And, and get this, this is made by the U.S. Mint, the same people that made that Silver Eagle right there made this stuff. 
Uh, so it's legal tender on top of it. It's made by the U.S. Mint, the same people that make uh, 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 Silver Eagles. And no sales tax on it because it has a uh, legal tender in Florida because we tax under 500 uh, on uh, non-American products. But this is an American product, so it's exempt from sales tax in Florida uh, for any amount. Even if you buy one dime, there's no sales tax on it. So many benefits on buying 90% right now. And it is buying America. What am I talking about? You're buying American still. Uh, so relax. Uh, as far as gold goes, not so simple. You can't gold eagles are like 170 to 200 bucks over. Way too much, folks. Way love gold eagles, but way too much of a premium. Uh, Valcombis are not American. I'm sorry, they're not made by the U.S. Mint, uh, and a lot of these bars are made by uh, Swiss Mint, uh, Perth Mint down in Australia. Um, uh, but there are some U.S. mints that we can buy from too. But if you can buy gold bars, if you can buy uh, uh, ones made in America, great. But if you can buy gold bars right now, you're paying less than 100 bucks over per ounce uh, uh, premium uh, versus uh, the ridiculous premium of uh, what is what do they say? Uh, 160 to 200 bucks over for American eagles. That's crazy. You can save 60 to 100 dollars an ounce just buying buying bars. So that's my recommendation. Uh, it's foolish to pay more than 100 dollars an ounce for any gold products right now. Uh, when you can order this stuff or buy it. Uh, I can order these right now, I have a good source. I'm out, you know, I don't have any on hand at the moment. Unfortunately, all I have on hand is the higher price uh, for cash and carry right now is the higher price gold products. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, I try to do my best here. Well, that's really about it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Appreciate you watching. Call me anytime at 954-493-8811 between the hours of 10 and 4. We are a local brick and mortar business, so we only do local. If you don't live outside, if you don't live in my area, I recommend you find a local uh, coin and bullion dealer in your area or within your state before you search elsewhere uh, to the other big three. Um, you know, big, big, the big three online sellers, which are Atmex, uh, SD, and uh, JM Bullion. Those are the three big online sellers. By the way, I will beat all their prices. It's pretty simple for me to do. And I hope and I expect that your local coin dealer can beat their prices as well. So you don't have to order online. And so you can keep that money local. Well, that's about it. Thanks for watching. If anything crazy happens today, I'll do another show. If not, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have yourself a great day. And uh, hey, listen, I really appreciate you all watching. And if you get a chance, hit that uh, like button and hit the subscribe button. Talk to you soon. Good day.